Successful activism is about being angry enough and loud enough to be heard. These are the words that Larry Kramer used to describe the world as he sees it. Here are some more. Power is about not sitting back. There will always be enemies. Stop being your own. Some reporter called me the angriest gay man in the world or some such. Well, it stuck, but I realized it was very useful. Too many people hate the people that AIDS most affects, gay people and people of color. I do not mean dislike or feel uncomfortable with. I mean hate, downright hate, down and dirty hate. Here are some of the words the world has used to describe Larry. Where is he? Passionate, maddening, tenacious, visionary, belligerent, prescient, brilliant, verbose, heroic, obnoxious, and loud, very, very loud. Without his thunderous volume, without his astounding intellect, without his clarity of purpose, in fact, without all of those adjectives, there would be no GMHC and there would be no ACT UP. Our friends in power would have continued to shortchange us and our enemies would have continued to scapegoat us without consequence. And most assuredly, there would have been thousands and thousands upon thousands of more lives claimed by AIDS. We now have a message from the brilliant actor who portrayed Larry's alter ego, Ned Weeks, in the HBO film, The Normal Heart. Good evening. Um, I'm Mark Ruffalo, and I'm really sorry that I'm not with you guys tonight. I'm uh, shooting a film in London, and so I won't be able to join you, but I was honored uh, to be asked by the GMHC to do this introduction for Larry um, remotely. So, hello everyone, hello Larry. Um, it's a big job to uh, introduce Larry Kramer um, because he's a big man. And uh, he's here receiving the uh, ultimate award, I think, for his work, which is the Larry Kramer Activism Award. Now, this is the first time a human being has received this award, and the fact that it's Larry is uh, all the more befitting. Um, so what does it mean to be Larry Kramer and an activist? I had the pleasure of playing Larry in the movie, or Ned Weeks, who we all have come to know as uh, a version of Larry in the, in the film The Normal Heart. And during that time of preparation, I got to really know Larry in a uh, really kind of intimate way. And I know him from his writing. I know him from what I've seen of his work um, in videos. And I know him from the precious time that I got to spend with him. And people remark on Larry's anger but what I got to see uh, in Larry that was most moving to me was the depth of his love. And from that love came this incredible will to fight for the people and the culture that he loved. And so it's a mistaken belief to categor categorize Larry as angry what you're seeing is a man who cares deeply, deeply, deeply for his culture and in large regard for himself. I've played a lot of different roles in my life. Uh, none of them have been so daunting um, and so challenging as walking in, in the shoes of Larry Kramer. Um, and what I learned about love I will take with me forever. What I learned about activism, I will take with me forever. Every uh, movement needs a Larry Kramer. 
they need someone who will fight against the most unbelievable odds every single day and take a lot of abuse from a lot of people to hold that position. It's often a thankless position. Uh, a person like Larry sets a course into the future that no one else is willing at that moment to take. And it could be incredibly lonely. And for a long time, Larry was fighting a battle basically on his own. And what he had to say was, the gay culture was not who we are having sex with. We are as important a culture as any culture. We have just as much to add to the overall culture as any culture. We have our music, we have our writing, we have our art, we have our beliefs, we have our politics, and we deserve to be here just like anybody else. And during the AIDS crisis, that was not accepted. And Larry fought every single day to show the world that that's what the gay culture was about. And his work continues today. Now, Larry's receiving this award today, but I guarantee you that Larry is not stopping with this award. Larry's work will continue far past Larry's leaving us. His spirit of fighting will continue far past his leaving us. And what he's fighting for ultimately is the complete equality of the gay culture in the world today. And that means righting the wrongs of the AIDS crisis. What you people experienced during that time was probably one of the most cynical, banal, and dare I say, evil um, oppression um, and disregard and absolute lack of human compassion. I would argue that that in a lot of ways, that fight was a gift to you and that the fight that Larry Kramer uh, began then is resonating through every aspect of the gay culture today. Um, equal rights, marriage uh, uh, equality, Larry's a godfather of that. Uh, but he's not stopping there. I know today that Larry will not stop until he sees the eradication of AIDS. And that's that will be the moment where Larry, I think, will finally feel like he's accomplished something. So, I want to introduce my friend, my mentor, someone who, who, who has taught me so much about love, about fighting, about, about finding what's important about what we're fighting for, about fighting the lonely fight, about going against the, the, the massive and oppressive uh, wrongs of the world. Um, and, and, and still never losing your decency and your kindness and your sense of love and place. Larry, I love you. I wish I was there with you tonight. I can't wait to hug you and kiss you again and to shower you with my gratitude and love for you. Have a great night, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, the often provocative, always insistent, sometimes incendiary, singular Larry Kramer. Thirty-four years HIV AIDS has been our plague for 34 years. We should have known more about this plague by now. Thirty-four years is a very long time 
to let people die. I think more and more about evil. I believe in evil. I believe evil is an act, intentional or not, of inflicting undeserved harm on others. Genocide is such an act. I believe genocide is being inflicted upon gay people. Genocide is the deliberate and systematic extermination of a national, racial, political, or ethnic group, such as gay people, such as people of color. To date, around the world, an estimated 78 million people have become infected, 39 million of whom have died. When we first became acquainted with HIV, there were 41 cases. The main difference between the Larry Kramer who helped to start gay men's health crisis in his living room in 1982 and act up in 1987 and the Larry Kramer who stands before you now is that I no longer have any doubt that our government is content via sins of omission or commission to allow the extermination of my homosexual population to continue unabated. It is talk like this that got the original GMHC board to boot me off and out. It also was talk like this that enabled ACT UP to succeed in getting us our own treatments. These treatments are not good enough but have been good enough to extend our lives. Unfortunately, they still come with side effects, and they reward their greedy manufacturers with more money than they would make locating the cure that would end this plague. GMHC was my first child, and its rejection was very painful. The original ACT UP self-destructed, which was also a painful experience. Once there were treatments, once there were treatments, the desire to ACT UP managed to evaporate rather quickly. This greatest achievement ever facilitated by the gay population, we actually went out there and got our own medicines, then decamped now that we had a drug that would allow us to do what we did and live the lives that got us in trouble in the first place. The remnants of ACT UP, my second child, is a painful place for is a painful place for me to see now. Thirty-four years is a long time for some, for pharmaceutical manufacturers to operate in such an evil system. Thirty-four years is a long time for every president and every Congress to sit back and let us die. <laughs> 34 years is a long time for Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is in charge of a research, to watch his and our president and his and our Congress and their National Institutes of Health, let us die. 
allowing people to die is evil and genocidal. We should have had more in 35 years. These are not what most people would call bad people, but these heterosexuals are not people who are losing any sleep over the death of so many millions of people. I no longer hear the word cure from the remnants of ACT UP or its spin-off treatment action group TAG or from anyone in our healthcare establishment starting with Dr. Fauci. I certainly don't hear it from anyone in Congress or the White House. Dr. Robert Gallo said a few weeks ago that AIDS will kill far more people than Ebola ever will. Thus, what an irony to be asked back into the arms of my first child, GMHC, just when a new executive director, Kelsey Louie, who feels and says much the same as I did and do, has taken over. Kelsey said to me, it has become clear to me that GMHC has every reason to be more aggressive on all fronts, especially in our public remarks. Oh, it's a new world at GMHC. <laughs> One that I tried to start, and Kelsey Louie is very smart and caring and, can, and courageous and I congratulate the board for choosing him to be your new leader. Many are saying that they are happy to see life back in GMEC. Board Chair Robbie Kaplan, our great lesbian lawyer, who secured a major marriage victory from the Supreme Court. <laughs> said when she asked me to come back, and I accepted. Kelsey said the words that won over my acceptance. We must aspire to a cure once and for all. Let's demand a cure and a society that values people with HIV enough to pay for it. Only if we aspire to more can we demand more. Only if we demand more will we get more. My first child sounds like a chip off the old block. I salute him and all of you for being here to join me in supporting Kelsey and his in our new GMHC. The power to change history is still within our grasp. We cannot wait another 34 years. This evil still being waged against us must cease. The battle cry now must be one word. Cure, cure, cure. <laughs> Allowing people to die is evil and genocidal. Yes, I believe in evil. 78 million people have become infected. 39 million have died. I no longer hear the word cure from anyone. It is time to hear it 
from everyone led by GMHC. We demand a cure. Thank you.